Hey everyone, please excuse the state of my shelves. They are in disarray and I have no excuses other than the fact that sometimes I just get lazy about putting books back on my shelf. But I'm here today to add more books to that shelf because I have a book outlet book haul for you guys. First off, I just want to point out that I am I am aware, I don't know if you're aware, I don't know if you care, but I'm aware that I haven't been putting out as many videos as I'd like, and that is because I work five days a week, and my sleep schedule is completely horrible. I am up all night till five, six in the morning, I sleep all day, and then I get up for work for three, and then I work all day, all afternoon, so usually when I get home from work I'm not really in the mood to film or I'm just too lazy to film and so I reserve my day my days off for filming and sometimes I don't even feel like filming on those days because I'm just trying to recuperate. I'm not even reading during that time like I'm not reading as much as I'd like to as well so it's kind of like I should make a video but I also should read. It's very Catch-22-esque. But uh, you don't want to hear any more about that. You want to see the books that I have in this book haul because it's a pretty, pretty big book haul. The box that I have is huge and heavy. Oh, it was a doozy to get home because I missed the package delivery on Friday. So last week, Book Outlet had their summer sale. It was awesome. I haven't ordered from Book Outlet in a while, so they had a lot of new stuff that I hadn't seen before, so I, I went a little crazy. Did, and I was a little disappointed I didn't get some of the books I wanted because they went really fast. Um, but that's fine. Completely fine. So the entire website was 15% off, and I had a $5 off coupon as well. So I went to town. I treated myself with some books because I haven't had a good book haul like this in a while. Yes, I bought a lot of books last month, but, you know, <sighs> whatever. You would... <sighs> Alright, so this is the box that I'm going to unbox for you. It is heavy as crap. So heavy. So heavy. Mm, I went a little too deep. Hopefully I didn't... Uh, there should be paper and stuff, right? When I made my order, I did not know that they had brought back the book outlet bear. And so because I had a big one, I got the book outlet bear. It is adorable. It's nice and soft. It's so cute. It's another thing to put on my shelf. You can hang. Nope. That's too high. These books are going to have to go away. You go up here. And you just see here. We're just going to go in order that I pick them off the shelves. Uh, so, first is Kinslayer by Jay Kristoff. This is book two in the Lotus War books. I don't know if it's a trilogy or more than three. I have the first book, so I got the second book because I have this thing, and this is a reoccurring theme in this just so you know, and I don't repeat myself, I'd rather marathon a series than, than read a book and wait because then too much time goes by between reading book one and book two that I feel like I need to reread and that takes time off of, off of reading other books. Next I have Red Spikes by Margot Lanigan. I think this is a s series of short stories. Um, I'm uh, trying again with the short story thing. This time this is stories 10 tales to poke and jab at your darkest fears and secret desires. So let's try something else with these short story things. I usually don't like getting scratch and dent books, but there's also <laughs> the uh, book cover. Might not always match the book that you get. Um, I got uh, A Great and Terrible Beauty by Lobo Bray. The one on the website had like the title up here, but you know, it's minor details. It's fine. Uh, why? There's a sticker right in the middle of the page. 
Why? Why? I'm not gonna be... Oh, please come off, please come off, please come off. Okay, they are so lucky. Why would you do that? Ah. Next we have Hood by Stephen R. Lawhead. This is like a Robin Hood kind of retelling, obviously, because it's called Hood. I found the story synopsis very intriguing and right up my alley with like that fantasy element. So it says, prepare yourself for an epic tale that dares to shatter everything you thought you knew about Robin Hood. So something a little different. Next I have Bitter Blue and Fire by Kristen Cashore. These are companion novels with the Graceling book. Um, if you've read these, please let me know how you're supposed to read them because they're not exactly like a series, but they are because they're companion pieces. I don't know. Do I read this one after Graceling or this one after Graceling? I don't know. Can, does it, does it matter? Um, because at the time that I'm thinking, just go by publication order. Next I have Tether by Anna Jarzab. This is book two in the Many Worlds trilogy. I got book one. Ow. <laughs> and I hit myself in the face with a book. Um, I got book one last year, or yeah, last year. So once I have all three books, I'll read the books. I'll read the books. It's going to, uh, to go on the shelf with its sibling. Parallel worlds. That's all I gotta say. Next we have Something More Than Night by Ian Tregillis. This is like a mystery noir type book but with angels. What more can I say about a book? I put it in my cart as soon as I saw it. Next I have The Dark Blood of Poppies by Frida Warrington. This is book three in this this series. Um, I have The Taste of Blood Wine is the first one. I don't have the second one, but I saw the third one and it's gonna match my first book. So slowly but surely I'll find the second book eventually, hopefully sometime soon, and then I can read this because I love my vampire books. I do. Plus you got like a ballerina on here and she's like the black swan, but she's also a vampire. Next I have Yona by Alison Goodman. This is the second book. Uh, oh, it's the sequel. It's the second book in a duology. It's the sequel to Eon. I don't have Eon, but I hope to one day procure it so that I could read this duology. And fantasy. I like reading fantasy, so why not get the book? Alias Hook by Lisa Jensen. This cover just is gorgeous. I don't know if it's the stark contrast between this shade of blue-purple against the white. Captain Hook, Peter Pan, stuff happens. Like, if you want to read, if you want to know more about these books, ooh, ooh hoo -hoo. I'm sorry, but sometimes when I get hardbacks, and they're a nice surprise. They're a nice surprise. This is gorgeous. This is a nice hardback and doesn't have a book jacket. But I don't know if you can see this, but it's just like... So this is The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley. Just putting that out there. But oh, this is adorable. I love this cover. I love the feel of this book. <sighs> I'm in love with this book and I hope it's a really beautiful story. I guess the only way I could describe this is to read the back. Uh, he lives his life like clockwork until he meet, met the watchmaker. 1883, Thaniel S Steepleton returns home to his tiny London apartment to find a gold pocket watch on his pillow. Six months later, the mysterious timepiece saves his life, drawing him away from a blast that destroys Scotland Yard. At last, he goes in search of its maker, Kaita Mori a kind, lonely immigrant from Japan. Although Mori seems harmless, a chain of unexplainable events soon suggests that he must be hiding something. When Grace Carroll, an uh, Oxford physicist, unwittingly interferes, Daniel is torn between opposing loyalties. Um, and then it's blurbed that The Watchmaker of Filigree Street is a sweeping atmospheric narrative that takes the reader on an unexpected jury journey through Victoria, London, Japan, and its Civil War 
as its civil war crumbles long-standing traditions and beyond blending historical and beyond blending historical events with dazzling flights of fancy it opens doors to a strange and magical past so yes this is absolutely beautiful i love this Sorry, I just saw the spine for the first time. <laughs> Next we have The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski. This is the first book of the trilogy. I've heard lots of people just talk about this book, so I'm going to pick this one up. I don't know if I'm going to like it because I've heard the synopsis and I'm just like, meh. But, you know, book outlet, cheap. Let's try it out. I could just go to the library. That would be the smart thing to do, right? Next we have Beastly Bones by William Ritter. This is the second book in the Jacobi novels. Um, yeah, I have the first one and now I have the second one. Story of my life. The last book that I have to show for you today is Night's Shadow by Sebastian de Castell. This is book two in the Great Coats series. I don't have the first book, but the third book just came out. Sam from Sam's Nonsense raves about this series so far. She's read the first two books and she's currently reading the third one. And so I just want to read these and hopefully give her um, maybe a buddy to gush about it with because, you know, so far, out of my Goodread friends, she's the only one who's read these. So, um, hopefully I can get to the first book. Though, I'm only finding the white cover, so I might have the second book be yellow, whereas the first book will be white, and the third book will be white. I don't know. I bought this for dirt cheap. These books are like, the hardback is like $30, so. Um, let's see. Ooh, nice map. This is like Three Musketeer-esque meets Game of Thrones kind of fantasy world. So hopefully I can find the first book soon and read these because I, I want to read them very soon. So that is my book haul right there. All those books. I just unhauled 20 books and now I have 15 to, to uh, go into their place. Alright, so that's all from us. I would like to have a little, I don't know, competition or so to see the best name to name this bear because all my stuffed animals have names. Um, all two of them. Um, actually I have three. One of them is not named and I don't know why because it's an albino alligator. But I have I'm just realizing that my stuffed animals are really dirty. I have St. Jimmy, the snowman, um, and which I just call Jimmy, and then this is Pookie. Someone else named him, and I just stuck with it. Both of these, I think, came from Hot Topic or something, but Pookie keeps my spare needles for needle and thread and stuff, so uh, Jimmy sits, sits on top of my bookshelves, and I guess Pookie does too. I don't know. But they have now an adorable new friend, so Leave your suggestions for names in the comments below and we will see what my new book outlet bear is going to be called. He's so soft. He's like a cat. <laughs> anyway, that's all for me. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!